making sounds. Um, and I kind of never really thought of it as music as, as such, and it was it was never really intended for um, anybody else to listen to. It's just a, a kind of a, a way of avoiding sleep for me. I've said it's kind of a bit like smashing square pegs through round holes. Um, it's kind of probably the most clumsy way of making music possible on a computer. Um, I, I, I don't I don't really want to be proficient at, at um, using the instruments because uh, I'm not really interested in, in the conventional sounds that come out of them. It was a case of kind of going through 15 hours of, of stuff and just trying to work out what what would what would work and um, and then reworking a lot of that stuff to make it to make it work and eventually ending up with the 13 tracks that I love bubbler. I'm more interested in in the wrong way of doing things than, than the right way. So my approach has been to kind of like sort of crush things together that, that kind of don't really work until hopefully they do work. You know, I mean, uh, rediscovering sort of Orteca and kind of you know trying to trying to figure out what their what their music's about and. Um, and, I mean, Scott Walker was was a, was a recent discovery for me, um, and, and, and a lot of a lot of a lot of film soundtracks. When I watch films, I don't tend to notice the music very much um, because it's doing its job properly. But then, as soon as as soon as you kind of listen to the music without watching the film, it adds another layer, and you, you kind of you have you have to um, you have to supply the the narrative. And I'm quite interested in sort of making music or, or, or sounds or soundscapes that that imply a narrative. I, I like the idea that the sound has character. E each particular sound has its own particular character, and they they kind of populate uh, a kind of a landscape. Films and music try really hard to to kind of to get along. I didn't want to make um, any sort of s strict narrative for the for the music, so it's kind of you know the, the um, um, so it goes with the kind of New York skyline going past um, I mean just mucking around with the with you know time reversing them changing the colors just just to make them kind of um, not painterly but but kind of you know not not just films I like to think of it as as, as kind of the future in in envisaged kind of in a slightly crappy 70s way so it's kind of you know I mean I think I think I think science fiction belongs to the 70s, you know the, the, that kind of hopeful utopian sort of but slightly crappy version of the future. I think um, bricolage is sort of you know a key word for I, I guess what I'm doing. It's wantonly um, um, clumsy. Uh, you know, and I, and I, th I think that's you know that's I mean I think that's kind of something that I, I kind of look for in other people's music that I like. I want to, I want to know how to make sort of you know um, things sound a little bit sort of crappier and a bit broken. My generation of artists all started at a time when nobody was particularly interested in looking at what we were doing. We did things because we wanted to do them, and um, we didn't really worry too much about. Um, the audience, and I think that attitude seems to be kind of current in in a lot of you know computer generated music. And you compare that to what's what you know what's happening at the Brits. Um, I, I, I know I know which I know which side I'm interested in. You know, it's you know I, I, I don't know. I, it's it doesn't cost much to make. You don't have to worry about making money from it. So you can do what you want. You can you can make you know anyth anything's possible. It's just it's just down to whether or not you know people are prepared to listen to it or that's that's fine. Don't care about them. <laughs> Don't care about the trolls. <laughs>